Well, what do you know? The disastrous launch of a game wasn't a result of a lack of talent on the part of the developers, but rather the conditions that the publisher set them in. Let's talk about Skull Island Rise of Kong, one of the, if not the worst game of 2023. It was readily apparent that this game was going to be rough when three months ago we saw the following trailer back in July 20th, 2023, which has been mass downloaded because it looks like this. If you go to IGN's trailer, same thing, just tons of downvotes in comparison to the upvotes and uh, plenty of people uh, deeming this to be the next Golem. And somehow we got a worse game than Golem. We got infamous cutscenes and gameplay footage like this that people are highlighting that showcase how janky, ugly, and at times hilarious this game looks and functions. And there's plenty of more footage to be found throughout the internet. Plenty of people are in disbelief that this is an actual video game that launched in the state that it did. Clips like these are garnering, I mean, 30.5 million views as of the uh, recording of this video with over 72,000 likes. This game has gone very viral for all the wrong reasons. We've got other folks highlighting cutscenes like these. Here's a tweet that also went viral, 2.6 million views with over 24,000 likes. And I mean, just look at how bland and dead and ugly this looks. And for an IP as big as, you know, Kong, King Kong, you'd expect better than this joke of a of an animation piece. And you got um, this cutscene that sees a bunch of crabs just kind of sliding around. The animations are janky and broken as all hell. The gameplay itself looks absolutely hideous. Here's an example of what a boss battle looks like. I mean, every single facet of this game is woefully underbaked and woefully unprepared for launch. The quality bar has been set to a new low by this title. And so the end result to all of this is that only one review for this game has come out thus far from IGN, which gave the game a 30%. IGN actually gave this game a worse review score than Golem's score of 4. On Steam, user reviews aren't faring any better, sitting at a score of 33% from a mere 53 user reviews. The player base is practically non-existent. The all-time peak is still sitting at 22 players, and I suspect it'll basically stay there. Game launches don't get any worse than this from both a critical and commercial commercial standpoint, folks. Now, because of the ridicule that this game has been getting, some developers have decided to speak out anonymously to news outlet The Verge. And in this article reporting on what these developers had to say, you can get a clear picture for why this game turned out so disastrously. Namely, the developers weren't given the resources, the condition, and the time to make a decent game. The headline itself already speaks volumes about how wrong this project went and how poorly the publisher handled this. That bad King Kong game was only in development for a year. The Verge report here that after speaking to developers involved in making this game, one fact becomes clear. Skull Island is the best it possibly could have been because it was produced under restrictive circumstances imposed by its publisher, Game Mill Entertainment. And if you look at the kinds of games that Game Mill releases, here's a list from Steam, for example, you can see that the vast majority of these are essentially shovelware. They factory churn out these games that they know are low quality, that are also developed under less than ideal conditions with very restrictive times. Their business model is essentially to factory churn out these very cheap to make games and make very short term profits by essentially riding off of the name of the license and IP to sell enough copies so they can fund the next just very cheaply made title and just keep this vicious cycle going. It's all about quantity over quality, with quality almost non-existent. The developers at The Verge spoke to insist that the team at Iguana Bee, the development studio that made Skull Island, is talented. That talent was not able to be fully expressed because Game Mill only allowed one year for the team to develop the game from scratch. Keep in mind, from scratch is important. Some people might bring up something like Majora's Mask. Well, that game was made in a year, but do keep in mind that, well, first of all, Nintendo is Nintendo and had the manpower and resources to be able to make it happen. But secondly, Majora's Mask was made off of the assets of Ocarina of Time. They reshuffle those assets 
And that's how Majora's Mask got made in a year. And even then, they were cutting it close, whereas Iguana B is an indie development studio who were not given the proper budget, manpower, resources to make this game, were only given a year, and had to make this game from scratch. They didn't have the benefit of having some kind of foundation to work off of existing assets and game systems to reshuffle. They had to make it from nothing. Under those circumstances, expecting a good game to be made within a year of development is simply unreasonable, and that's the fault of the publisher. The developer details here that the development process of this game was started in June of last year, and it was aimed to end on June 2nd this year. So one year development process, just absolutely ridiculous from a publisher who feel no pride or shame about the products that they output. The year long timetable is even more ridiculous when you consider that in terms of the manpower surrounding the development of this game was anywhere between 2 to 20 people working on this game at a time within that one year development cycle. So that's not enough people to make this timetable work. And you can see that if Iguana B is given the right project with the right amount of time, the right resources and the right environment for them to be able to shine as a studio, they can actually do good work based on the fact that they worked on this game called What Lies in the Multiverse, which was co-developed by... Iguana B and Studio Voyager. Studio Voyager is the main development studio, but Iguana B provided support. And this is a game that garnered really positive reception. You can see right here from Steam reviews that it's got a review score of 94% from 339 user reviews. In fact, What Lies in the Multiverse was received positively enough that it won Best Game in Latin America at the Best International Games Festival, an indie game festival focused on games developed in Latin America. Iguana B, for those who don't know, is based in Santiago, Chile, and they have unfortunately worked on a number of these shovelware types of projects that Game Mill has greenlit, including Little League World Series Baseball 2000 and 22 among others and according to two sources that the verge spoke to this game right here little league was also only allowed one year for development and so how can a studio break out of this cycle of producing just shovelware garbage when the publisher continuously gives them development environments where making good products just isn't possible and this is a pattern for game they've gotten too comfortable with this they have a reputation for contracting smaller developers to make licensed games under short turnaround times with varying degrees of success and quality working conditions were made all the more unreasonable by the fact that a former Guana B developer felt that it was very common for us to not be provided with all of the information about the project, which was quite frustrating when working because we had to improvise with the limited information we had on hand. Gaming was also very stingy with their budget, and so oftentimes you'd see really valuable talent let go. I remember very well that they let go of a colleague who had been there longer than me, a developer said. Deep down, I knew it was because the publisher didn't provide them with enough funding to maintain a certain number of people for an extent period. The talent is what ultimately makes and builds a game. If you cheapen out on the talent, then you're cheapening out on the game directly. It's not impossible to make a good, high-quality game within a year. It depends on the circumstances, but to make such a feat possible, you need the right quantity and quality of talent. That talent needs to be provided concise information and general support. And this team right here, that cycle between 2 to 20 people, just straight up didn't get that. So, of course, Skull Island Rise of Kong turned out the way it did. And the one who suffers from this isn't the publisher, but rather the developer who will likely experience layoffs and the like. And this very much feels like a situation where a game publisher is taking advantage of a small development studio and keeping them stuck in this vicious cycle of developing piss poor just shovelware licensed games. Small indie studios that want to make original games, but it needs money to fund those projects, and the only money coming in is from publishers like Game Mill to make licensed games. And because that's what the majority of their portfolio consists of, publishers only approach them for these kinds of low-quality licensed games. And so they're stuck in this vicious cycle because it's the only way for the development studio to survive. Game publishers know this, and so they take advantage of that to continue factory churning out these kinds of soulless games that, no doubt, I mean, kill the creativity of people who want to work on something they're proud of. Developers who spoke to The Verge report that when Iguana B was working on What Lies in the Multiverse, a project that they knew had a lot of potential that involved a lot of just, you know, fulfilling creativity, the colleagues who worked on that project seemed happier. Of course they were. Here's a direct quote. To be honest, they seemed much more motivated and enthusiastic than the rest of the team working for Game Mill 
Who knows why? Well, I mean, because they're working on something that they're passionate about, and it's not just a survival mechanism that was shoved onto them from a publisher that doesn't really care about releasing high-quality games. But alas, Iguana is in a financial situation where they do have to take these jobs from these publishers who don't really give a shit. It's a love-hate relationship because they're the ones who accept or give the projects, and Iguana Bee doesn't have the means to develop almost anything on its own because, well, money, and again, other things like a lack of support, a lack of quality manpower because of how the game publisher cheapens on talent, and a general lack of just giving them the right information, just uh, the right condition to allow the developer's talents to shine. Game developers aren't magicians, they can't just produce amazing things out of thin air, they need time to cook, if you will, you know what I mean? And when you give them this awful, shitty kitchen and not enough time to bake, then you're gonna get a shit pie. Especially when a publisher like Game Mill doesn't give development studios like Iguana Bee the wiggle room to delay the game, given that during the development process of any game, just things can happen. Personnel changes, changes in a game's scope, and all of the events that happen over the regular course of game development. When there's no flexibility on the development timetable and the studio's livelihood depends on meeting an unreasonable deadline, I mean, the challenges surrounding a development cycle of a game are further amplified. And with how few cooks there were in the kitchen, with how shady the kitchen was, with how unsupported that kitchen was, crunch really set in motion. In February, I was on automatic pilot by the end of February because all hope was lost, said one of the developers who spoke anonymously to The Verge. Now, apparently some developers were proud that they got this product out at all. We did what we could and we had a great time developing it, said a developer who took to Twitter to express this and just trying to put some semblance of positivity out there. But I imagine that deep down they cannot possibly on a creative level be proud of this. Uh, the pride comes from the fact that they managed to push through, that they didn't give up, which yes, they should be proud of that. But I mean, the game is shit. You know what I mean? Like nobody's going to remember this game. And if they do, it's going to be for all the wrong reasons. And uh, that's not the fault of the developers. They were just put in the worst conditions possible. They were set up to fail. They were set up to release a game that was always going to look and play like this under the circumstances that Game Mill put them in. Even the most talented development team would have output something like this if uh, the publisher put them in the conditions that Iguana B had to suffer because the publisher really just doesn't give a shit. Well, at the very least, that's one man's take. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts and opinions are on what developers from Iguana B, former and current, had to say about the working conditions under Game Mill and surrounding uh, Skull Island Rise of Kong. And to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Young Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Young out.